What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I'm going to be continuing the coverage of the leaks that we got for Black Ops 6 a couple days back. If you guys missed yesterday's video, I talked about this massive leak where there was a bunch of gameplay shown, as well as essentially all of the menus on a limited build of the game, which revealed a ton of information to us, and yesterday I covered a lot of the miscellaneous things, as well as my general thoughts. Today, I'm going to be diving deeper into these leaks, looking at all of the specific class items that we have. So all of the guns, equipment, field upgrades, perks, as well as how the perk system works, and combat specialties. Keeping in mind, of course, this is from a leak, and also it's clearly from a limited build of the game. This isn't going to be absolutely everything we see when it comes to the full launch of the game. And we've got a lot to cover, so let's just dive right into it with the weapons that were leaked. Keeping in mind, we have had a data mine leak for quite a few months now, and I also made a video going through all of the official reveal for Black Ops 6 and pulling out tons of guns that I was able to identify, so there are actually way more than what we've currently got on this list. But let's go through the ones that were leaked in this build of the game, which I suspect these are going to be the guns that we'll have access to in the beta. For assault rifles, there were only three in this build. We have the XM4, based on the Colt 723, the AK-74, which, by the way, they actually call it the AK-74, not the Castoff 74 or something like we've seen in recent years with the Kalashnikov platform. And then we have the Ames 85, which appears to be somewhat based on the SAR-80 assault rifle. As for SMGs, we have the C9, which is the MP5, the Tonto 22, which is based on the Grendel R31, and the Jackal PDW, based on the Jeopard PDW. Then for shotguns, we just have one. This is the Marine SP, based on the Mossberg 500. For LMGs, we have the XMG, which is just an LMG version of that XM4. Then for marksman rifles, we have two of them. We have the SWAT 556, based on the SIG SG platform, as well as the DM10, which is based on the SR25. It is worth noting, it doesn't look like we're having a tactical rifle section here, it's just assault rifles and marksman rifles. And then finally for primaries, we have sniper rifles, and with this we have the SVD, as well as the LR762, which appears to be based on the PGM Hecate 2. Next for the pistol category, we have the GS45, which I believe is a USP45, and the 9mm PM, which is the Makarov, and then there was just one launcher in this build called the Sigma 2B. So there we go, that's the limited selection of weapons that were available in this build of the game that was leaked. Next, let's get into our equipment. And for lethals, there's no big surprises here. We've got a frag, semtex, thermo grenade, blast trap, and the combat axe. For tacticals, again, no big surprises here. We have the concussion, the flashbang, the stim shot, a prox alarm, which appears to be a non-lethal placeable equipment that just informs you that an enemy is nearby when it gets triggered. And then we also have the decoy grenade coming back. As for field upgrades, again, this appeared to be a very limited list. I suspect we're going to be seeing more than just these five field upgrades that were in this build. But with this, we have the assault pack, which is essentially the munitions box for Modern Warfare 3. And just a reminder, a quick thing I noticed with the leaked gameplay with this as well, just a subtle change they made when you throw this assault pack, it automatically picks that up for yourself. So you don't have to throw it on the ground and then pick it up. It just auto picks up for you, which I think is a great tiny change. We've got the trophy system here, the Neurogas, which is a placeable piece of equipment. And if somebody gets close, it will trigger it. And then it will just have the effects of a gas grenade. The next one is very interesting. This is the acoustic amp which appears to just be the inverse of the Dead Silence field upgrade that we've had. So with this, it's a personal audio amplifier that makes enemy footsteps louder for a duration. And it is worth noting in this game, you'll see when we get into the perks, we do have the ninja perk in the game for quieter footsteps, but there doesn't appear to be an awareness or amplify style perk to counter that. And instead, this is your counter. It's going to be a limited use counter. And I really like the sound of this. Obviously, we have to see how all of these are balanced together, as well as the default footstep audio. But I think it's great to put this in the field upgrade slot because it allows for that counterplay, but you've got to know when to use it. You can't just sit in the corner all game long and listen for those footsteps. You have to activate this at the appropriate moment in order to get those amplified footsteps. And I'm honestly really excited to see how this ends up playing out in game compared to the opposite situation where we can only have quieter footsteps for a short period of time with a field upgrade. So that one's pretty cool, but there's one more here, and this one is brand new and very interesting. This one's called Sleeper Agent. And with this, the description says, infiltrate the enemy team, appearing as a friendly to them for a short duration, and kills will extend the time that this is active for. And then after that, it does mention gunfire and enemy content will reveal your true identity. So if you are firing an unsuppressed gun, it appears you will show up as a red dot on the enemy's minimap. And then presumably when they're talking about enemy content revealing you, I believe that'll be things like the UAV, for instance, that should reveal you on the minimap as an enemy rather than as a teammate. But outside of that, it at least sounds like you're going to show up with a friendly name tag above your head rather than an enemy name tag or maybe no name tag at all. I'm not too sure on that. And honestly, this one sounds really strange. I'm not too sure how I'm feeling about it. It does seem like a very weird thing to be adding to the game. And it does sound like it could potentially cause a lot of frustration 
rotation, especially in hardcore game modes. I think that's going to be even more brutal. But in saying that, of course, I'm going to keep an open mind. I'm curious to see how it plays out in game. It may just be one of those things that's like a weird gimmick that nobody ends up using. Or it may be something that is quite powerful and also really frustrating. So time will tell on that one. But I've got to say, I'm feeling pretty skeptical about this one right now. But there we go, that wraps it up for the field upgrades, and now let's get into all of the perks that were in this build of the game, and honestly, this does look like a full perk list. I believe we are going to have access to all of the perks for the beta build of the game, but of course, it is possible I'm wrong, maybe they will have more perks on top of these with the full build of the game. But with this, we have the standard three tiers of perks, so by default, you get to pick one perk per tier. And then there was also a perk greed wildcard, which if you use that, it will allow you to select one additional perk from any tier. And with this, in the tier 1 slot of perks, we have Assassin, which is Assassin from Cold War, so enemies that are on a streak will show up different on the minimap, and when you kill them, unlike Cold War, instead of getting immediately extra score toward your streaks for killing those players, you have to kill them and then go pick up a pack that they drop, and then that will award you extra score. We also have the Scavenger perk, pretty straightforward there. The Bruiser perk, which is brand new, and with this one, melee kills and finishing moves will replenish your health, and you earn extra score toward your streaks for those kills. After that, we have the Ninja perk, which it is worth noting, the description says you will have quieter footsteps, not silent footsteps, like we have in Modern Warfare 3. We have the Ghost perk, which is the Treyarch-style Ghost perk, which means it's only going to be working when you're on the move, or you're planting or defusing a bomb, or controlling a score streak. We have the Flak Jacket perk, which will protect you from explosives, and the Tack Mask perk, which will protect you from many of the tacticals in the game. And I've got to say, I really like this style of a perk structure, because for most of these perks at least, they're what I consider to be the playstyle defining perks. And with them being in the same tier, competing against each other, without a wild card at least, if you want to stay off the radar, you don't get explosive resistance. If you want quiet footsteps, you don't stay off the radar. If you want that explosive resistance, you're not going to have quiet footsteps. And I think that makes a lot of sense to put these in the same tier. I love that there are real trade-offs here. Instead of just getting all of these best perks that allows you to stay off the radar, deal with explosives, and have quiet footsteps all at the same time, you have to make more careful and deliberate decisions to define what the role of that particular class setup is going to be. Now, I will say it does seem a little bit strange to have Scavenger and Bruiser in this tier, just because both of those seem extremely weak compared to the others that are going to have a massive impact on your general performance in the game. But outside of that, I like how the other perks are structured in that tier one slot. Then for tier two, we've got Dexterity, which in this game will reduce weapon motion when jumping or diving, and you also take less fall damage. We have Gung Ho, which provides you with reduced movement penalties when reloading or using equipment, and it allows you to reload while tack sprinting. We have the Tracker perk, so you can see those enemy footsteps on the ground, and it is worth noting this one will also auto-ping players when you aim down sight at them, although there will be a large cooldown between those pings. We have the Engineer perk, which is pretty standard for a Call of Duty. It allows you to see equipment through walls for a short distance. We've got the Forward Intel perk, which appears to be a bit different from the Cold War Forward Intel or Vanguard Forward Intel. With this, you get increased minimap coverage, and instead of seeing enemy players as they spawn in, you don't get that indicator the moment they spawn in, Instead, this one gives you directional indicators for revealed enemies instead of just a red dot. Then after that one, we have Dispatcher, which reduces the score cost for non-lethal streaks. And that's interesting. I wonder how much of a reduction we see to the score there to really encourage people to use support style streaks. At least on paper, I like the sound of that. And then finally for this tier, we have Fast Hands, where it allows you to swap weapons faster and it will extend the fuse for thrown back grenades. Now finally, for the third tier of perks, we have Double Time, which extends your tactical sprint duration. Bankroll, which is kind of like Hardline from the past. With this, you just start every life with 150 score toward your streak already present. Then we have Vigilance. With this one, you get a HUD icon every time you appear on the enemy's minimap. So if they have a UAV up and it sweeps you, you will get an indicator that you have been swept by that. And it also makes you immune to Counter UAV, Scrambler, and that Sleeper Agent field upgrade we talked about. So it's nice to see there's at least a counter to that field upgrade. So if you notice somebody is using that and it is getting annoying, you've got the ability to counter them with a perk. Then after that, we've got Cold Blooded, pretty straightforward. Quartermaster, which allows you to recharge equipment over time. So kind of like the resupply perk from the past. We have Gearhead, which allows you to have two field upgrade charges with increased charge rates. And it allows you to hack enemy equipment and booby trap enemy care packages. And then finally for our perks, we have Guardian. And this one provides you with faster healing while capturing or holding objectives. And in game modes that allow for it at least, it will allow you to revive down teammates faster. And there we go. Those are all of the perks that were leaked. And like I said, I do believe this may be all of the perks that we actually have in the full build of the game as well. 
And in general, I'm not seeing any like major flaws or major issues, at least on paper with these perks. The main thing I can think of here is it just seems like Scavenger and Bruiser are a little weak for that tier. But outside of that, I'm liking how everything is showing up here with the perks. But this is where you may be wondering, why are the perks different colors? Why did I make them different colors here? We have red perks, blue perks, and green perks within each tier of perks. And this is where the brand new combat specialty system comes in. And let's go over those in great detail. The way these work is if you select three perks of the same type or color, then you will get an additional perk or combat specialty. So if I choose three of the red perks, this will give me the Enforcer Combat Specialty, and with this one, every time you kill an enemy, it will grant you a temporary buff to your movement speed and health regeneration rate. And we actually saw little clips of this in the official Black Ops 6 reveal, and you can somewhat see that in action, at least, on the right-hand side of the screen. Then, if you select three blue perks, you will get the Recon Specialty, and with this one, enemies can be seen through walls for a short time after respawn, which again, we did see a brief clip of that in the official reveal. And then on top of that, you will get a heads up display edge indicator that will flash when an enemy is outside of your view. So it seems kind of like the high alert perk, although it doesn't mention anything about a directional indicator. So it may be the weaker version that just shows you that somebody is looking at you outside of your view without giving you any indication of the direction that they're looking at you from. And then finally, with that combat specialty, you will leave no death skulls when you're killing enemy players. And then finally, if you select three green perks, this is where you will activate the Strategist Combat Specialty. And with this one, you will earn a score bonus for objectives and destroying enemy content. You will be able to see enemy content through walls. And by content, it's like equipment, field upgrades, I believe score streaks as well. You'll be able to see those through walls for a short distance. And you'll be able to deploy equipment and field upgrades faster. And there we go. Those are the three combat specialties. And I kind of like the idea of this. It seems to just be an additional reward or bonus if you build your class setup in a highly specialized way where you're going all in toward one style of play. But of course, you don't have to select three perks that are the same color. You can pick whatever color perks you want. And if you do mix and match these perks from different colors, you're likely going to have a more versatile class setup on your hands. However, of course, if you do that, you don't get that additional bonus with the combat specialty. That's reserved for the players that go all in by focusing all of their perks toward one style of play. So overall, like I said, at least on paper, this is an interesting concept, and I'm curious to see how this plays out. I'm curious if this actually increases overall variety in perk choice, because for some classes, you're going to want that combat specialty, so you're going to focus all on one color, whereas others, you want more variety with your perks, so you're going to be giving up that combat specialty in order to make that happen. In either case, there's one last section I wanted to cover here, and this is all of the leaked score streaks from this build. And in this case, this definitely appears to be a limited list, and not all of the score streaks we'll have available at launch. But with this, we have the Scout Pulse, the RCXD, the UAV, the Counter UAV, the Watchdog Helo, the Hellstorm, Interceptors, which appears to be like Air Patrol from Black Ops Cold War, and then finally, the Chopper Gunner. And one thing I noticed as well, at least with this list, we don't appear to have groups of score streaks that require the same amount of score to earn, and therefore you can only select one streak from that particular group at any given time. And I quite like that, and I hope this remains the case as we see the full list of score streaks down the road. And with that, that's finally going to wrap it up for today's video, and I'm really curious to hear from you guys in those comments down below. Based on everything I provided in today's video, how are you feeling about the class setups, the perk structure, the perk balance, and the combat specialties in Black Ops 6? Are you guys generally liking what you're seeing here, or not so much? If you enjoyed this video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.